Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a mono-white angel tribal deck featuring a Jada, Font of Hope as our commander, 2 mana 2-2 two, two legendary angel with flying and vigilance, can tap adding white mana that we can only spend to cast an angel spell, so it's pretty rare for white to have access to this type of mana acceleration. We can even attack with Jada thanks to vigilance and still tap it for mana second main to ramp into a 4 mana angel on turn 3 for instance, and then as if that weren't enough, each author angel we control enters a battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it for each angel we already control, so that can very quickly get out of hand and produce a mass number of plus one plus one counters to help close out the game. So Jad is an incredibly powerful commander if you can play it early and if you get to untap with it to start ramping. And then we've got a ton of angels in this deck and other angel synergies, starting out with a few cheaper creatures, which also include some changelings that can have the angel type, since there's not too many cheap angels out there. So at one mana there's the Segovian Angel, a 1-1 flyer with vigilance. We also have the Universal Automaton, which is a changeling, so it also has the angel type. And the 1-drops are usually better when played after we have a Jada in play, so they at least get a few extra plus 1 counters. And then we also have a Scroll of Avacyn, which we can cycle and maybe gain 5 life if we control an Angel to enable some other life gain payoffs. At 2 mana we've got the Angelic Page, a 1-1 one, one with Flying, can tap to give an attacking or blocking creature plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn, but just another cheap Angel. We've got the Youthful Valkyrie, a 1-3 Flyer, says whenever another Angel enters battlefield under our control put a plus 1 counter on it, so it scales nicely into the late game. And then we have Metallic Mimic as another shapeshifter which can name Angel when it enters the battlefield, so it counts as an Angel, and other Angels will enter the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it, so it's imitating Janna's ability, even though it's not quite as powerful. And then Bishop of Wings is another Angel payoff card. Now Angels will gain 4 life when they enter the battlefield, and when they die they leave behind a 1-1 Flying Spirit token, so we can still have a bit of a board presence after a removal or a sweeper effect. Then at 3 mana we have Angel of Eternal Dawn, which is great at punishing ramp strategies, because our opponents cannot cast spells with mana value greater than the number of turns they have begun. There's Angel Vitality to give us extra life gain, and especially in Historic Brawl where we start on 25 life, this will easily get that plus 2 plus 2 bonus. Inspiring Overseer will gain 1 life and draw a card when it enters. Righteous Valkyrie, another awesome payoff for gaining extra life, as our Angels now also gain life when they enter the battlefield equal to their toughness. And if we have, in this case, 32 or more life, our team will also get plus 2 plus 2. Aspirant is a great ramp card in an Angel deck, giving all our Angels a 2 mana discount, especially useful if our opponent focuses on killing Janna, since now we can easily replay it at a 2-mana discount. Then there's the Resplendent Angel, another life gain payoff, as it can make additional 4-4 Angel tokens end of turn, can also pump it ourselves and then give it plus 2 plus 2 and life link. Resplendent Marshal can maybe exile Angels from our graveyard to put plus 1 counters on the team. Bloodline Pretender, another changeling that will be an Angel and pick up additional plus 1 counters as we play more. Then Faceless Agent, another nice one, can find another Angel when it enters the battlefield and put it into our hands. Steel Seraph, a new addition from the Brothers War, also an Angel, can play it for 3 mana thanks to Prototype, or 6 mana later in the game as a 5-4, and then can potentially give our Angels Vigilance, Lifelink, or Flying until end of turn. Next up we have the Champions, which have double team, so when they attack we can summon another copy into our hand, and when it enters the battlefield we get a special boon token, which says when we cast our next creature spell, that creature enters the battlefield with our choice of a plus one counter, a flying counter, or a lifelink, so just a nice source of card advantage if we can attack with it. The Irregular Cohort, another Changeling, will make another 2-2 Changeling token, so quite nice alongside Janna as they both pick up extra plus one counters. We've got Linvala, 3-4 Flyer, says activated abilities of creatures your opponents control cannot be activated, it's also great against opposing mana creatures. We've got Sarah Paragon to help us replay our cheaper angels from the graveyard. Sarah the Benevolent, a Planeswalker, can make an angel token with a minus 3, and the plus ability gives our flyers plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn, and the minus 6 is a nice callback, giving us an emblem saying if we control a creature, damage that would reduce our life total to less than 1 reduces it to 1 instead. We've got Starnheim Unleashed, can foretell it for 2 mana and then cast it later for double X and white to make X 4-4 angel tokens with flying and vigilance, or we can cast it for 4 mana to make a single token. 
And then the Thraben Watcher 2 2 Flying Vigilance says other non token creatures we control get plus one plus one and have a vigilance. Then at five mana, the Angel of Destiny can be a fun alternate win condition as we now start gaining life instead of dealing damage to the opponent. And if we get to 40 or more while the Angel attacked, we can just win the game on the spot. Good Angel of Invention, which can make additional servo tokens when it enters with Fabricate, or potentially get two plus one plus one counters, has Flying Vigilance and Lifelink, and also acts as an Anthem effect, giving other creatures we control plus one plus one. Angel of Sanctions can exile an opposing non-land permanent and opponent controls until the Angel of Sanctions leaves the battlefield, and we can also embalm it out of the graveyard so it can come back once again. The Baneslayer Angel Classic 5-5 Flying First Strike a Life Link, and sometimes this can come up, protection from demons and from dragons. Then we've got Lyra Dawnbringer, another nice anthem effect for our angels, giving them plus one plus one and a life link, and then a 5-5 flying first strike, a life link itself. And then the Enduring Angel can also potentially save us, says we have Hexproof, it's a 3-3 flying double strike, and if our life total would be reduced to zero or less, then instead transform the Enduring Angel and our life total becomes three. And then we have access to a Star Star Flyer, still says we have Hexproof, and its power and toughness are each equal to our life total, and whenever it attacks we double our life total, so that can maybe keep us alive. And then our curve toppers include Sanctuary Warden, can immediately draw extra cards and make 1-1 citizen tokens by maybe removing a shield counter or later plus 1 counters if we have a Jada going as well. Then the Harbinger is a payoff for gaining life as we get to make additional 4-4 angel tokens end of turn, a 4-5 flying life link itself. Angel of Dire Hour can sort of act as a settler wreckage. When it enters a battlefield, if we cast it from our hand, exile all attacking creatures, and we can play it in the opponent's turn thanks to Flash. Then we've got Emiria's Call, either a 7 mana sorcery or a land, and if we cast it, we can make two 4 4 Angel Warriors with flying. Then we've got Sephara, which will make other flyers indestructible, 7-7 seven, seven flying lifelink itself, and can maybe cast it for a single white if we tap four untapped creatures we control with flying. Then there's Saros Emissary, 7-7 seven, seven Flyer. When it enters, we choose a card type, and we and creatures we control have protection from the chosen card type. So against opposing creature decks, we just name Creature, and now we don't take any damage of the opponent hitting us with their creatures. Against removal heavy decks, we can maybe name Instant, and then our opponent won't be able to target our creatures with their spot removal, so it can be very powerful in the right circumstance. And finally, our most expensive angel is Avacyn, Angel of Hope, 8 mana for an 8-8 eight eight with Flying, Vigilance, and Indestructible, saying author permanence we control half indestructible so not that easy for the opponent to get rid of and then our non-creature spells include some spot removal with swords to plowshares destroy evil can hit enchantments or larger creatures fateful absence either creatures or planeswalkers and then a march also a flexible answer to creatures artifacts or enchantments and then we've got a few sweepers as well with the day of judgment and wrath of god because sometimes the opponent is off to a faster start and we can wait on deploying jada wipe the board first and then start deploying our angels afterwards and then Heliod's Intervention can maybe destroy multiple artifacts or enchantments at once. Can also gain a bunch of life to maybe set up some life gain synergies. And then we've got some Artifact Ramp as well with Arcane Signet, Cold Seal Heart, Guardian Idol and Mindstone. Swiftfoot Boots, another great one to protect a key creature. Can also be useful at giving an Angel Haste so we can attack with it right away. And then Celestial Vault can also help us find more angels from its spellbook. And then we can eventually put them into our hand as well. So another fun way to find more of our angels. And then at 3 mana there's Heraldic Banner to pump our creatures and make more mana. We've got Herald's Horn to discount our angels and maybe reveal some angels of the top to put into our hand. Ocatra's Monument discounts our creatures and will make additional 1-1 one -one warrior tokens on the ground to maybe help us block. Semblance Anvil can be pretty high variance, but the idea is to exile a creature with it so they get a 2 mana discount. So it's also easier to replay Janna if the opponent answered it. And then the Celestis, more ramp, that also gives us some life gain and card selection. And then at 4 mana, Hedron Archive to make 2 mana can also be sacrificed later to draw 2. Key to the Archive to grab a card from its spellbook as well. And then at 5 mana, Gilded Lotus can make 3 mana right away. And last but not least, Immortal Sun to give all our spells a discount, draw an extra card each turn, shut down all Planeswalkers since we only have the 1 in our deck, and give our team plus 1 plus 1. So incredibly powerful if it sticks around. And then our mana base, besides Emiria's Call, also includes a few more utility lands with Castle Ardenvale to make a 1-1. We've got Iganjo, which can be channeled to deal for damage. We've got Blast Zone as more removal. Ponder's Enclave can maybe help us draw, so we don't need to overextend into Sweepers. Faceless Haven with our Snowlands can turn into a 4-3 that also has all creature types, so also counts as an extra angel to maybe help grow our team alongside Jada. 
got Karn's Bastion to proliferate, also works well with all the plus one counters from Jada to get additional ones. We've got the Plaza of Heroes to maybe protect one of our legendary creatures, and then Radiant Fountain to gain two life can also come in handy. And then of course 32 Snow-Covered Plains to enable Faceless Haven. So yeah, that's our Angel Tribal deck, let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play facing Niv-Mizzet Paroon, so blue-red control. And our hand's not bad, if we can find a third land that is. With a bishop turning our angels into spirits. Good against removal. And turn to signet looks good here. Opponent's gonna brainstorm. So, can play a banner next turn. Ideally, draw land so we can also play bishop or jada. And then a Gilded Lotus will make it easier to cast our expensive angels. Okay. Play Banner on white, and I think play a Bishop first. And then next turn we could be looking at Lotus into Jada. And then if it gets removed it's not going to be too difficult to replay. Opponent might have an answer for Banner, Prismari Commands. I'm all glad they didn't kill a Lotus with it at least. So we can still play Lotus into Jada. And hit for one now. Could have marched to XLT Pwn's Treasure Token for X equals zero. Probably better off keeping it to answer Niv. And then Agent's gonna be a nice play next turn, finding a replacement Angel. So even if they kill Jada, we can still replay it, play Agent. Iteration for card draw. And with a Bishop we would be ecstatic to find some of our life gain payoffs as well. So play Agent. And find Sanctuary Warden, perfect, so we can attack first. And then tap Jada to cast Warden for what it's worth. And then probably okay to remove a shield counter. And Sephara we can almost play, so pass it back. Anger of the Gods, that's a pretty good one. So we'll remove the last shield counter. And seek new knowledge. So let's see, next turn we've got... 9 mana, so not quite enough to play Jada plus Safara. So do I go Jada plus Page, or do we play Safara anyways? Because we need to tap 4 untapped flyers, so we'll be one short. Sadly, Anger exiled our creatures, so we didn't get any 1 1 spirits from Bishop. So, yeah, I think playing Jada. First is still fine. And then we'll attack. Can draw here as well. Maybe remove from Sanctuary Warden. Don't expect our opponent to be able to deal 7 damage very easily. And then we'll pass. And then we can level up our Blast Zone here if we don't need to march. Okay, never mind. Dragon's Fire dealing 4 damage. So they might be able to finish off Warden anyways. Dragon Fire, so they would have been able to kill a 7 7 as well. Of course, if we had a Sephara, it would have been indestructible. But uh, we'll try again next turn, I guess. So counter on Blast soon. And then I still hang on to March as opposed to removing the treasure. See if Sephara resolves. And I should maybe attack first. So I can tap Jada and have a little bit more mana for Blast Zone or maybe Castle. That resolves. Up to 49 life. And our flyers are now indestructible. 
opponent could have a Rivers Rebuke to bounce everything. And then we can still make a 1-1 end of turn. But nope, our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a Promising Hand. Facing a Lillian of the Veil, so Mono Black Discard slash Control. So having the Artifact Ramp is much better than relying on creatures, since those will be answered pretty easily. And Harold's Horn, another great addition. Discount for Angels, maybe provide a bit of card advantage. So, best case scenario, draw land next turn. Could already play a Planeswalker. Although I don't necessarily want to make an Angel into Liliana's minus two ability. So how about Harold's Horn into Jada? Or we can go Aspirant into Jada, present two creatures so we get to keep one. Sure. And I'm not sure which one I'm keeping here. I guess we'll keep Aspirant to play Sanctuary Warden next turn. That's an easy way to snowball a bunch of card advantage. So there's Liliana. A fight? And, you think you and Jada down. <gasps> also with the Aspirant it's going to be pretty easy to replay Jada anyways. So yeah, Sanctuary Warden... That's probably it for now. Hope to draw land off of it. And take out Liliana. Sorry, I'm not so next turn... Today. If we don't draw a land, what's my play? Could go Monument into one mana Jada. Or Herald's Horn might be better. Although Monument's also good at countering Liliana's Edict effect. If we do draw land, we can play Lotus. And then still play a 3-mana artifact. And then the Warden also works very nicely with all the plus 1 counters from Jada. So we don't necessarily need to remove the last shield counter from it. 4-mana. And Davriel the play. It's gonna take out our Aspirant. The Boots. So now Jada's back to costing 4 mana. Boots to protect the Warden is not a bad plan. Probably should have attacked first. Now we could still lose Warden to a Sweeper. But uh, I'll try and protect it now. So we had the early advantage, but now we're kind of weirdly stuck on 4 mana. Rankle's gonna stay back, luckily had the 1-1s one to protect Sanctuary Warden. Wanna start developing our mana, but unable to really double spell is annoying. Could make a hasty Marshal, but then we're exposing Warden to removal. So how about... This turn I just play a Cold Steel Heart so we can play a Lotus next turn and actually make some progress. And I think I keep Warden back, 5 damage could be nice, but this helps us against Rankle potentially hitting us and uh, leading to some dangerous situations, especially if our opponent finds a way to remove all the 1-1s. And yeah, there is a blood on the snow, so shield counter would have been more useful now. Opponent can bring back Davriel or Rankel. Goes for Davriel. At least the boots can give a creature haste to pressure Davriel. So our play might be Sarah make an angel attack Davriel. So they get a discount, but they lose one life for each creature they control. Okay. So now, if I were to play a Lotus, I could still play a Marshal and attack Davriel. That seems decent. No point in exiling Warden just yet. And Davriel down. Now, of course, they can still play Liliana to get the Marshal. 
but that's okay. So that's what I'll do. Enough with the mysteries. And then now the monument is going to help us against future minus two activations. Possible exiling the uh, warden is still better in case the opponent has a way to reanimate it. Okay. So what's next? I can play Monuments, play a cheap Jada, maybe after playing Herald's Horn. It's gonna cost two mana. And we can give it haste with the boots to kill Liliana. And now we have a 1-1 one -one that we can sacrifice. Okay. Hope to reveal some angels off the top. They've got a stronghold, which is also close to making a ton of extra mana. Spider Queen can make some reach spiders. Good against our flyers. And a Grim Tutor. Oh no. What is our opponent going to get here? Not entirely sure. Could be some big finisher. Maybe a Bolas of Citadel for card advantage. Hedron Archive, not an angel as it turns out. So if I type Jada, I can play Sephara. Play Archive and still play Sarah as well. Wouldn't be able to move the boots, maybe that's still better. To protect Sephara from removal, which makes Jada indestructible. I guess that's worth a shot. And we might see instant speed removal in response, Murder Strider, which they could cast thanks to the discount from Davriel. So that didn't work out. Okay can still go after a spider queen, force him to jump with a spider token. My power is for annihilation. So yeah, this Fraxian Arena is taking over. They have whatever they want in hand, thanks to the Grim Tutor. So we're about to see a big play here. Cruel Reality is probably what they got. Sacrifice a creature. If we cannot, we lose 5 life. Well, the Soketra's Monument is pretty useful. They might try and remove the token, so we have to sacrifice Jada, but we can replay it pretty easily. So I'm okay playing that game. There's also a Faceless Haven we can't forget about. I land on top. Still waiting for our angels. So let's say we play Jada. Can make an angel token. Opponent's gonna lose two life to Davriel's ability as well, plus one more from Arena, so they're taking quite a beating as well. Could also think about sacrificing Hedron Archive to see a few more cards. Could also consider animating Faceless Haven before making an angel token, so it picks up an extra counter. And then Haven could also attack. Don't hate that idea. Give the token haste. And then at this point do I just attack their face? In which case our opponent would probably jump with a spider, take four. And then three more, I guess two more, since the spider's gone. Nah, let's kill Spider Queen. They can double jump if they'd like. They're gonna double block Haven instead. It's 
Spider Queen down. At least we don't need to worry about Blood on the Snow, since they've already cast it. And then we can sacrifice Token to Cruel Reality. Jada we can replay pretty easily. So we'll see. They can replay Liliana. It's gonna be a Crux of Fate instead, another board wipe. That's a setback. At least we're empty handed, so Liliana's not too useful, but Surin certainly is. So another card draw engine. We're gonna make a vampire to protect against hasty flyers. And Sanctuary Warden Exile to make a zombie. So we're gonna lose five life. Or actually a lose Sarah, since it also works on planeswalkers. Finally found an angel. So play Jada, play a Bloodline Pretender, make some more tokens. And then I can give the Pretender haste, and then it can trade for a Vampire token. Yeah, I guess it's fine. So Vampire down. And I can protect Jada. And then do I keep land in hands? No, I think I still play it, even though we could kind of trick the opponent into plussing Liliana. The extra mana could still be helpful since I'm planning to sacrifice Archive soon. Soren's gonna plus. Seven mana from Cabal Stronghold. Draws with Arch. Four cards in hand. And an Eldest Reborn to get a 1 1. So, yeah, they probably were better off not exiling my six mana Angel, although still plenty of great targets left. Feed the Swarm, kill my token. And then I guess we'll trade since we're going to lose Jada to the enchantments. Would rather lose five life and kill a zombie. Nothing on top. Yeah, Jada's eight mana now. That's starting to add up. So maybe I'm better off drawing with Archive. And waiting on Jada until we can actually make some progress. Okay. Well, those are pretty good. Limvala, make a token... And then Baneslayer, so 6, 7, we've got 10 mana total. So I'm going to miss out on some plus 1 counters if I don't play Jada first. I think that's okay. Since I want to empty my hands for the second chapter of Eldest Reborn, make a bunch of tokens to play around Cruel Reality. And then we can take out Sorin here with Baneslayer. And pass. And then next turn we're threatening lethal in the air. And dungeon map's fine. Opponent's gonna venture. And they can still draw with arch. So they're digging for answers. Opponent draws, four mana left. Hope to dodge a sweeper. It's gonna be Infernal Grasp killing Limvala. Opponent falls to nine. Sack a 1-1. One, one. And reveal an angel, awesome. So let's see here, can I play Jada for eight mana? Play agents, which will get extra counters and we can give haste. I'll wait on playing my lands. I 
find Angel of Dire Hour. Okay, so give Faceless Agent hastes. And that should be lethal if her opponent has nothing. And there we go. Wow, what a grindy game against Mono Black Control. Opponent even tutoring for a card, but it still wasn't enough, as Monument kept us alive against Cruel Reality. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and it's the mirror match. So what do we think of this hand? Should be alright, although awkwardly Castle is tapped, so we don't get to play Angel on one, but still something cheap to follow up. And then Limvala can also shut down the opponent's Jada from making any mana. So yeah, the plans turn to Jada, maybe turn three Limvala already. And being on the play also helps. Hoping our opponent doesn't have a Swords to Plowshares. Uh oh, I think our opponent actually has it. Yep, alright. So advantage opponent for sure now. Opponent plays their Jada, and we don't have an answer. So what's the best I can do? Play a Bloodline Pretender. Alternative was play Blast Zone, level it up. So we'll play Jada again next turn. As our opponent's gonna find a couple planes. Good card, especially when you're on the draw. And they have another two drops, so leveling a Blast Zone might have worked out better for us. I think I'm still on the play Jada plan. And then next turn we can finally play Linvala. Maybe after playing a Gilded Lotus as well. In the trenches to pump the team. We'll eventually exile one of our creatures, but that's fine for now. Okay. Lotus. Play Limvala. And hit for four. And then next turn we can add quite a bit of power and toughness to the board. Celestial Vault to draft a card from its spellbook and eventually put those in hand. Pretty fun card in an Angel Tribal deck. Let's see here. Sanctuary Warden. Looks appealing. Maybe Mimic into Sanctuary Warden. And then I can play the 1 mana Angel by tapping Jada as well. Hope there's no board wiping coming since I'm going all in. And our opponent concedes. Awesome. So managed to recover nicely from the one mana swords. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing the Yogmoth Praetor. And our hand's not bad. Turn 1, probably play a scroll first. Turn 2, Jada. Turn 3, Banner plus 1 mana Angel. And we've got plenty of flyers to block the swarm at least. Definitely a nice combo with our commander, which will draw extra cards if they can hit us. Jadar going wide. So name White can attack for three, and then I could tap Jada to play Angel and still have the mana to sack Scroll. I think I would rather have extra blockers, so I'm just gonna use Banner to play or one drop. The zombies probably still gonna hit us. Point's got a fatal push for Jada, sadly. At least no traitor unless there's a dark ritual. And then we can replay Jada next turn, activate scroll. Order of Midnight, 2-2 two -two flyer. And an Angel of Vitality. Yeah, I think I'm still in favor of Jada here. 
and then we can hit for three. Opponent can block, at least not profitably. And then, yeah, opponent can play their commander and draw quite a few cards here. If they don't have a swamp, we can at least stop the swarm from attacking. So just a two twos. So we'll draw and then decide whether we want to trade here. Ooh, Resplendent Angel. Do we trade our one drop here? Probably reasonable, even though if I save it, these will be a little bit larger. Don't know if it matters against Mono Black, they're just going to destroy these. And otherwise they should still be large enough to block profitably. Now I could wait to play Resplendent Angel until I maybe have a lifelink from Steel Seraph. So how about we go Angel Vitality and then I can uh, play Steel Seraph as well to give Jada a lifelink, gain a bit more life with Angel Vitality. And hopefully next turn enable it. All right, the crown can draw quite a few extra cards here, especially with the decayed zombies from Jadar. Equips the battlefly and our opponent passes. Can give Angel Vitality a lifelink attack. And I guess we could also play a Thraben Watcher if we'd like. At this point I might attack with all, and if they trade for Steel Seraph, we're still very far ahead on board. and falls to four, we get an angel end of turn. And we'll see how our opponent gets out of this. They'll need a board wipe of some sort and they don't have it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing Jacob Hawken, which we don't have an easy way of removing, although I guess Insight is an enchantment, so Destroy Evil could maybe destroy it. And uh, yeah, I'll give this a try. We're on the play, so we should be able to resolve Jada. And I think that's going to be slightly better than Signet here. Next turn, Angel. Turn after Alira. Could also go Signet plus Idol. But uh, I'll be able to play Lyra next turn with Jada, so I think I'm liking Angel of Eternal Dawn more, since that also is quite effective against an early Ornithopter of Paradise. And then Lyra will give our Angels lifelink and plus one plus one. Skyclave Relic into Jacob. Okay, do we want Angel of Destiny instead? And then next turn Lyra could potentially set up the win out of nowhere. Next turn our opponent does get to transform Jacob since they can pay six. So they could cast whatever they want. Although, let's see here. Yeah, I guess the Angel of Eternal Dawn is also very good against Jacob, so not too worried about that. So yeah, sure, we'll play Angel of Destiny for a double strike. And then next turn Lyra gives our team lifelink, so kind of doubles up on the Angel's ability. And we could already get to uh, what needs to be 40 life in Historic Brawl to win the game with the alternate win condition. I guess our opponent can jump with the Ornithopter, but that still doesn't necessarily keep them alive, since this just needs to attack, it doesn't need to connect. So hopefully the Angel does what's necessary here to keep us in the game. And yeah, opponent passes priority. Play Lyra. Attack. And we should go up to 40 life. And Angel of Destiny wins the game.
So yeah, that was a quick one against Jacob, and luckily we had the Angel of Eternal Dawn to stop whatever the opponent was trying to do. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Tatiova, Benthic Druid, so blue-green landfall deck. It's going to be a tough matchup, but we actually have a bit of creature removal with swords, and then Aspirin to discount champions. Could be a way to victory. So yeah, turn 2 Janna, turn 3 Aspirin, and then turn 4, we can maybe Swords plus play Champions. Can also play a Guardian Idol here. I guess that's okay, because then next turn I can play Aspirin plus a 1 mana Janna. Opponent's got the Provisioner. Also potentially worth exiling with swords, since that can give the opponent a huge mana boost with all the extra treasure tokens. And if I'm planning to exile the commander, that one they can easily replay if they have a provisioner making mana. So yeah, Aspirant into swords, I think. And then next turn, Jada plus champions to get an extra counter. The boots could also maybe give it haste so we can double team right away. Alright, Cobra. A land now makes an extra mana. And Slogurk. Okay, two mana Resplendent Angel looks nice. And the champions could maybe give Lifelink to help out. So, we've got a lot of options. So if we start with Jada, I could play Boots, equip Jada so it can tap for mana right away and then still play something afterwards. That seems efficient. And we'll play champions. I guess attack first for two in the air. And then next turn we could potentially enable Angel with a hasty life linker thanks to this weird boon. Lotus Cobra makes a mana. There's Tatiova. And our opponent passes. Okay, so I think step one play Resplendent Angel. Opponent might have a bounce spell. Although we'll see here. And we'll choose lifelink. Can move the boots, and then I can still replay Angel if they try and bounce it. And equip the boots. So that's actually totally fine. Replay Angel. Aspirant's doing a ton of work. Although now we did lose the lifelink boon, so we don't get to make an extra angel token end of turn. But our opponent's still taking a beating. We get another champions. And we're in a great position to kill the opponent next turn. But our opponent does get to go off with Tatiova. Hope they can find a time warp or... River's Rebuke, those are kind of the cards I'm afraid of here. Can also use the Intervention to gain life to enable Resplendent Angel. So that could come up. And yeah, our opponent concedes. Too many flyers for them to deal with. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Turgrid, God of Fright, so Mono Black Sacrifice deck. Our hand is not great for the matchup. I like Mana Acceleration, but Wrath of God's probably not going to be at its best. And uh, yeah, just not quite powerful enough, I don't think. Take our Mulligan. This might be a little bit better. Still not amazing. Do I play Angel on one? I think I save it until after we play Jada, so it has a bit more impact. Semblance Anvil. Don't have a ton of expensive cards in hand, but uh, could certainly come in handy. Can maybe pitch our one drop and then next turn 
play a whole bunch of cards in the same turn. Ooh, Saros Emissary. So now Anvil's looking pretty good. So yeah, sure. Play Anvil pitching our one drop. And then I'll play Jada. If they kill it, we can replay it pretty easily. And I could already play a Saros Emissary next turn. Oh no, disaster. Elspeth's Nightmare always feels bad. Although I don't have anything in hand for them to get rid of. Now we do. So that was a bad draw for us. Okay, so play Jada, play Marshall. Don't think I'm gonna Fateful Absence my own creature just to get a clue token. So that's gone. And then what to name with Saros Emissary is also an interesting question. Probably instant. Play Crafter kills probably Jada. It's gonna cost four mana to replay now with Anvil reduction. Yeah, that's still fine. And a land, so now I can play Jada into Angel Vitality. We are potentially losing Saros Emissary to a discard effect. But I'm not even sure what I would name with it right now. Instant or Sorcery probably makes the most sense. Our graveyard's gone. But we've got a pretty nice board here. Can also use Karn's Bastion to proliferate, get more counters. And Anvil definitely put in a ton of work. So was definitely worth it to wait on playing the one drop. So they can finally play Turgrid. And then maybe threaten to make me sacrifice next turn. It's gonna be an Eldest Reborn instead. Okay, I think uh, we let go of Jada once again. And the Harbinger won't be active just yet. So I guess we'll go for Emissary. And then I need to name a type. So if our opponent has an Edict effect, it gets around Emissary. Most Edict effects are Sorcery Speed. So I think Instant makes the most sense. Attack for 10. So our creatures are safe from Insta Speed removal. Discard Harbinger. So the Sagas Definitely showed up at the right time to still make us discard. Shadow's Verdict. Exiles are smaller creatures. And uh, can still play Eternal Dawn to protect from another Edict. And hit for 7. Okay. Opponent does get Harbinger back. So if this named creature we would have been able to attack past it. Now we cannot. And a Liliana Dreadhorde General. It's going to make a sacrifice too. And uh, yeah, as we said, Edict effects get around Sarah's Emissary quite nicely. Okay, that we can flash in. So that can maybe steal the win. Opponent is at four. This has five power. So pretty good top deck. Opponent plays Turgrids. Hopefully they tap out. Mindstone, perfect. Are we going to steal this one when our opponent was about to stabilize? Hit for five, and there we have it. Close one here against Turgrid. Opponent definitely close to turning the game around. So yeah, we got to see Mono White, Jada in action. Some very close games along the way. And uh, one thing that I did notice is that we did face some pretty tough opposition, lots of powerful opposing commanders, which is fair since Jada is also pretty powerful in its own right. But just as a warning, don't expect any easy games if you're picking Jada as your commander, since you're going to get matched against the better commanders out there. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.
I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.